Hello everybody, welcome to another weekly market news video. Today is Monday 19th of April and let's look at the markets, uh, what was happening last week and how is it possible that uh, we reached another record highs, uh, especially on S&P 500 but also on NASDAQ and Dow Jones and other uh, US stock indices were under very positive sentiment which was pushed up by some uh, very strong hard data from uh, US as well as some earnings seasons uh, which uh, especially uh, there were some results uh, from uh, Q1 uh, from banks uh, names like JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs uh, they all reported a very positive uh, first quarter uh, mainly thanks to the fact of uh, increased uh, investment activities and investment uh, profits uh, which uh, pushed the earnings of those companies to uh, levels which were not even expected by analysts and economics economists uh, around the world. So we uh, reached above the consensus and uh, we are still going uh, quite strong. You can see the positive sentiment here on S&P 500 stays with the market even as we begin the new week. Uh, also NASDAQ and other, uh, like I said, stock in, uh, in US uh, were uh, going uh, quite good and you can see Nasdaq was even able to uh, break uh, the previous record high and go uh, even a little bit a little bit further um, as uh, we can talk about the Nasdaq uh, what was uh, one of the main drivers uh, over there was obviously the yields in, from US Treasuries uh, which uh, we're under pressure uh, from last week, uh, which is uh, a little bit uh, interesting uh, as uh, we've seen uh, some very uh, interesting data, macro data from US, especially uh, the inflation and CPI data, which uh, suggests that uh, we could see some rise in yields, but we do not see that as right now. Maybe it's because of there is a higher demand for uh, U.S. Treasuries bonds because uh, the yield is quite interesting like I said before uh, and you can see the yield is uh, much lower than uh, previously 1.75% uh, where uh, we were about two weeks ago and it was the main catalyst for uh, the correction on uh, U.S. stocks in the season especially the technological and growth stocks which uh, rely on low uh, rates in the economy. So that's uh, more or less uh, very uh, positive for uh, technological stocks which are going strong and we uh, like I said before expect uh, some earnings uh, from first quarter from those companies uh, and they can uh, pretty much uh, uh, show us uh, how they're uh, how they were they were able to perform even during those extended lockdowns in several countries so uh, like i said uh, sentiment on the stock indices is very positive uh, even uh, the economic data was very positive last week as uh, we had uh, like i said before some inflation data from us on i believe it was on tuesday or wednesday last week yeah you can see the cpi data on yearly basis uh, we have risen to 2.6% which is uh, extremely high you can see the core CPI is uh, on a year to year uh, on a year on year basis on 1.6% which is not that crazy um, we should be more interested in the core CPI as uh, this is the one of the major uh, measurements uh, for uh, the uh, inflation growth uh, but I'm going to show you the reason why the inflation has jumped like that from 1.7 to 2.6 percent so almost one percent jump uh, which was mainly reflected in uh, these in the base from the last year as it is compared to uh, the level uh, at the same time last year uh, which was extremely low so there isn't needed uh, much for a uh, huge number so that's uh, something that we all also have to take in consideration but also uh, one thing and that's uh, that uh, we 
should expect uh, some uh, even further rise in inflation in the coming months. But also, uh, which will be more interesting, is uh, how the inflation will look after those months when the base is going to keep on rising from uh, 0.1% to something above 1%. And then uh, we should see inflation to stagnate a little bit. And if it will not happen, then uh, US economy and uh, FOMC has some serious problem, but we will have to wait and see how this thing uh, will play out. Also, another very interesting and important data from uh, US Last week, I cannot uh, not say uh, the retail sales from the U.S., which jumped also rapidly. I believe it was on Thursday, maybe. Yep, the retail sales, uh, they jump uh, by about about 10% um, on a monthly basis. On a yearly basis, uh, you can see the jump here, 27.7%. 07 percent, so almost thirty percent jump in retail sales, which also reflect uh, reflects the fact that the direct checks to uh, U.S. Com- customers consumers uh, were sent on uh, March, so uh, that also is reflected in uh, the rise on of, of retail sales, and it also shows us that the economy is is, is going quite strong which was also uh, confirmed by the in- initial jobless claims, uh, which rose by nearly 600k. Uh, but uh, more interesting is the fact that it was the lowest number since the beginning of the pandemic. So even the job market is going uh, pretty strong and the numbers for the month of April uh, should be also pretty good as the economy uh, keeps on reopening in the several state as well, states as states as well uh on friday i believe there was not much interesting uh from the economics data standpoint you obviously see some cool um some cal- calm down on uh especially in the housing market as the yields uh are like i said before rising and uh, long-term e- long-term rates are obviously rising as well so this uh has some effects on mortgage and other stuff which affect the job which affect the housing markets and uh it was a, in 2020 it was in a rep, rapid rise so uh there should be some uh cool uh calm down uh about that uh as we can speak about the different markets uh, obviously lower yields uh kind of put pressure on US dollar. You can see the last two weeks uh, was very positive on Euro, which uh, was able to rise uh, as right now on Monday above 120. Uh, uh, so another milestone for uh, Euro USD. Uh, GBP USD is also experiencing some uh, positive uh, sentiment from the, the end of the last week to uh the beginning of this week we can see uh we again uh broke some interesting um resistance and um is going to uh erase some of the losses from the previous weeks so we will see how the positive sentiment will stay with the market and also on another uh another different uh different different markets different uh, currencies uh, you can see the us dollar has began the week uh, very negatively and also helps the other currencies to get some strength and uh get some gains over there uh oil is oil is looking quite positive from last week it is has broken the symmetric triangle over here and also the fundamentals um a little bit playing in favor of uh, higher uh, higher prices of oil, but uh, nothing really that uh, interesting, uh, to be honest, as uh, the inventories in the U.S. decreased a little bit, which uh, has its effect. And also OPEC uh, has said that um, uh, the cuts might go even further uh, to the end of this year as the AI... Uh, has uh, reported their 
new uh, inf uh, demand expectation for this year and they uh, increase their target uh, as uh, this uh, should mean the demand should m more or less uh, put pressure on prices and uh, if, the de if the supply is not going to change it might be a problem a little bit for the price and then it can go even above 65 67 dollars a barrel in uh, the nerd in the near term uh, so that's about it about the markets uh, even uh, very interesting was uh, the situation on uh, cryptocurrencies as uh, we were able to see let's look at the Bitcoin on on the weekend over the weekend some uh, steep sell-off uh, let's look at the measurements how far we have uh, gotten over there uh, on Bitcoin it was about 20% correction right now we are going above about 13% uh, correction so we will see how uh, long uh, how long can we go uh, let's look at the different markets let's look at the Ethereum um, more or less uh, the sell of here was driven by the fact that maybe the positive sentiment was uh, you can see uh, from those last days uh, here it was uh, <coughs> it was extreme hype uh, it was 20% here uh, we even can see can look at the Dutch coin which was um, which was um, extremely hyped up uh, from 14 13th of April you can see we have gone up about about 500 percent right now we are over 500 percent even the sell of here uh, which was about 47 percent was uh, a signal for those buyers to jump back into the market and uh, those light coins uh, were under heavy pressure as uh, they were like I said before hyped up over the last week as uh, we were expect um, expecting uh, expecting the uh, IPO or direct listing of uh, the coinbase company and the coinbase company the IPO itself not really anything interesting uh, let's look at the market and how it were uh, it reacted went up from the open to above 38 40 uh, percent then the uh, CEO of the company sell sold about I don't know 300 million worth of shares and uh, the price obviously dropped uh, above 30 uh, to 20 30 percent it's still relatively high it's uh, on uh, pre-market uh, about 340 dollars um, but long term obviously the earnings and the revenue of the company uh, given the fact that uh, the uh, crypto hype is not over yet and it's still going quite strong it can go even higher and it can even reach the capitalization over uh, the market kept over 100 billion dollars um, so yep that's um, that's about the com base and the fact that uh, it helped it helped push the uh, prices of crypto to uh, another uh, extremely high levels and maybe it was a little bit the uh, reason for uh, the correction that we were able to see. So this will be it for uh, the markets uh, last week and this week. Uh, let's look at the micro calendar and what we can expect uh, from uh, the week ahead. Uh, on Monday, nothing really that interesting. GDP, I mean, uh, housing data and uh, especially the job data from UK on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we have another several data, including CPI from the UK. We have uh, Bank of Canada interest rate decision uh, with the CPI data from uh, Canada. Um, on Thursday, there is uh, ECB meeting, so this will be uh, quite interesting. Uh, it's with the press conference, and on Friday, retail sales data from the UK. 
several market PMIs from uh, European countries and uh, housing data, new home sales from the uh, United States. So this will be it from a macroeconomic standpoint. And uh, as we can look at the earnings for this week, uh, we expect Coca-Cola, IBM, United Airlines, Johnson & Johnson, Netflix, PG, uh, Verizon, Chipotle, uh, Snap, Intel, AT&T, American Airlines. You can see it's a bunch of uh, extremely big, interesting and important companies. Uh, American Express on Friday, which uh, should give us uh, a different look of the uh, economy and how it is uh, recovering uh, from the pandemic. So this will be it for today's video. I thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section below the video. And I will see you next week.